Today I'm going to show you how to get the most out of Cursor by highlighting some of the key features as well as certain ways to actually use it that help me get the most out of it. To demonstrate all of this, I'm going to be building a customer support chat window that you could embed on your website. I'm going to be using JavaScript full stack here and React, and this is actually my first tip is to use a common language or framework when you're working with Cursor because the AI models that it's using will have a lot of training data on these different languages like JavaScript and Python are probably the most common. So the results that you get from the code that it generates are just gonna perform a lot better. And I would suggest using popular frameworks such as React or Django, which are also just gonna have a lot of code examples that the AI models will have been trained on. Cursor can absolutely work with other languages and frameworks. I've just seen the best results using really common ones. Okay, so I've initialized my React project and now we just have a blank slate to work with. I'm gonna start the project by using Cursor Compose, which you can access by clicking Control or Command I, and it's going to be able to modify multiple files. So this is why I like to get started with it because it's gonna be able to create a bunch of files for me that I'll then be able to modify. So let's go ahead and give it a description of our project. Okay, so I gave it the description. I'm building a new support chat application which will allow users to talk to a chat bot. I need you to create some basic components in a Node.js express server in index.js. Okay, enter. I also recommend using the composer if you're trying to refactor something into multiple different components. Okay, now we can go file by file here and apply the changes and review what changes cursor made. So we can control enter to accept that. Looking at index, that looks good as well. Okay. So it didn't make multiple files, but that's fine because we're just getting started. Okay, so right now the UI looks pretty clunky. I send a message, it, I don't know why this header is so big. Let me show you another powerful feature that Cursor has, which is image to code generations. So right now I found this free chat interface on Figma, and we're just gonna take a picture of this and ask Cursor to generate a UI that is gonna be similar to this. I'm gonna to switch to using the sidebar chat here and we'll just paste the image in and say, please implement the necessary code to make the component reflect the design in the image. Okay, so it's written a bunch of code for us. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, now it's, it's also made some changes to the CSS. I can actually just click on the file names here. So the sidebar is pretty similar to Compose. You just have to click on the names of the files, but I do kind of like how it's in the side. So it makes it easier for me to coordinate between code and the generated changes. All right, so we'll apply all of these. Now let's see what it looks like. Okay, well, it definitely looks a lot better, but it's not perfect, right? So what we can do is iterate and we're gonna just respond in that chat and continue the back and forth. So we'll give it this list of changes. And this is an effective way to quickly iterate on things because if you do one at a time, you're gonna have a lot of time where it's generating the code. So I like to just think of multiple changes, put it all in one message, send. Okay, we'll go through and apply these changes. All right, now when we flip over to the chat, things are looking a lot better. We got these nice icons and things are coming together. So this design looks pretty nice, but it doesn't look just like the Figma. So what happens if I just keep iterating? Okay, with that iteration, we are a little bit closer, but there's still issues. And now we have this, this has become rounded for some reason. We don't have an X button and this button looks a little smaller. This text is too big. Here's the thing, and this is a big tip. You need to know when to stop using AI and when to actually get in there yourself and start coding. So you gotta learn the limits of these models. And right now, for example, I've seen styling to be a big limitation. Like if I need to get something pixel perfect, it really saves me time if I just go in there myself and start modifying these things. Because I could go back and forth with the AI for an hour trying to get it you know, just pixel perfect, but It'll just get stuck in a loop. And so keep that in mind as you're coding with cursor. It's really easy to get caught up in that game of going back and forth, but sometimes it's easier to just pause and go and change the code yourself. 
This is also one of the reasons it really helps to have an engineering background and experience with code. So if you're brand new to this, you might not know exactly what to write. So you might have to go and chat with the AI to try to figure out how this actually works and have it explain it for you. But that's a whole other subject. So for now, let's just move forward with this UI. Let's go ahead and turn this into a real chat bot by hooking it up to the OpenAI Assistance API, which does a really good job of managing state and remembering all of the messages in a thread, which is why I want to use that solution. So we'll flip over back here and we'll go to our server. Now here's the thing. Cursor is using these models which are trained on a bunch of data, but the newer assistance API wasn't part of that data. So how can we use it? Well, there's a number of ways that you can import documentation into Cursor. Cursor actually allows you to search the web. So if I type into the chat at web, then I can ask questions that it's gonna actually go and look up information for and then be able to use in its response. So we could potentially go to this OpenAI documentation page, paste it in and ask it to make some changes. But there's another way which is a little bit more formalized and that is the docs ability. So you can, if you type in at docs, it has a bunch of official documentation already built in that it can go and pull from. So in this case, I'm gonna look for OpenAI and we actually have it there. So I'm gonna say, let's build an assistance API powered chatbot here. You can create an endpoint to create a thread and then a message endpoint, which will include the thread ID in the request. It's gonna go ahead and go through the OpenAI documentation and figure out how we can use the assistance API. Okay, now I realize that I created these endpoints, but we never modified the UI to actually use them. So let's go ahead and make a request to do that. And this brings me to another tip, which is using the right amount of context in your request. So when I go to the chat on the right, by default, it's gonna use the file that you have open as the context. And you will see over here, it's using index.js as the current file. We wanna modify the UI, which is gonna be an app.js over here. Now, what we can do is we can actually tag files. So I can actually tag the server file and then use it as context for making the changes in the UI, which is by the way, why I highly recommend that you put all of your code front end and back end in the same repository, because it really helps you make these full stack changes where you might need to change the UI, the API, maybe some database interactions, all in one go. Like if you pass all these files in, then it's gonna be able to make the changes across all of those files. So definitely put all your code in one repository so you can tag the files in this way. And then reference only the files that you need. Don't run the chat across your whole repository because it's just gonna get confused by other random files and it'll reduce the quality of the code that it outputs. So give it just enough context, but not too much. So here we basically asked it to use those new endpoints and create the ability to create new chats. We'll apply those changes. Okay, we send a message. Let's see if we get anything back. Oh, looks like I missed actually creating an assistant. So I'll have to go to OpenAI and make that. Okay, let's send a message. Waiting for a response. All right, we got a response. Now let's see if it remembers the message because we're using the assistance API. All right, take a look at that. It knows that my first message was, hey there. So that's the really cool thing about assistance APIs that you get these features out of the box. And I could continue building this out, you know, add an ability to add files, and then I could actually upload those to the assistant. And we could have a nice little widget that we could embed on our site that we built, you know, in half an hour uh, using cursor. Hopefully those tips help speed you up, but take a look at this video if you want a deeper look into what's possible with Cursor and all of the various features that it has. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.